This is how I depicted how the flood actually happened. Prior to the flood, the Earth was one giant Pangaea-type landmass with a one-sectioned mass for water, which I believe was in the Pacific. And so what we have is we have the firmament up in heaven, and we have the Earth with a much thicker rind with much more water beneath the ground and even a thicker metal rind. And so prior to the flood happening, the waters from above, they began to build up within the celestial sphere. And there happened to be an occurrence where enough was enough. And the sonoluminescent stars, they congealed it together within the celestial sphere and they formed holes. And so they formed spiral drains. You know, spirals are in the shape of drains. And so the water came out and there was also celestial sand, a lot of it at the bottom of the celestial sea that also came out as well. But the majority of the water that flooded the earth came from below, I believe. And so the earth expanded somehow, some kind of a heat. Uh, the outer rind became really hot and it expanded. And so the continents, they began to separate, but not separate entirely as we see them today. But they did separate and the mountain ranges became formed. You know, they the continents buckled together. You know, that's why we get the Andes and the Rocky Mountains. And it was like a buckling effect. So the entire metal line stretched out and the water from beneath the ground came up and obviously if you throw a rock in a, into a bucket of water, it's going to sink. So the water rose above the land. And so that's what happened. So prior to the flood, there were giants in the land. Uh, everything was bigger because it was a hyperbaric condition within the atmosphere or below or at the ground level where the nitrogen was actually higher than oxygen. Well, it still is. <laughs> and so it stayed up above higher than the oxygen. And so it didn't really reach humans or animals or plant life. And so there was a hyperbaric condition which allowed them to grow longer and grow larger and live longer. And so when the flood actually happened, uh, like I said before, the sand came down and it, 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 it fused together and it formed three separate glass bubble spheres. One very close to 100 kilometers high, which actually put, pushed the water down. And that was the indication in Genesis 9, Genesis 9 where it talks about the rainbow, which, which was promised to know that I would never flood the earth again because there was, there was glass in the sky. So the glass pushed the ocean waters down and it abated and so it was pressurized more and so that's why the water can no longer rise up above in full above the entire continental continents it can't really do that anymore because of the pressurized glass here that is pushing it's compressing keeping things down and so that's what happened and so after the flood we still had the continental shelving so we don't see the continents as we see them today but if you look at some of the, the maps that they show on Google or wherever, you can actually find the, the oceanic tracings of the deeps and lows within the ocean. So that would give me a good understanding of how to actually formulate the continental shelf. And so it is recorded in scripture that the days of Peleg happened, and Peleg lived about 100 years after the flood. And if you take that word Peleg, the word archipelago comes from the word Peleg. So Peleg is the root for that. So archipelago means a group of small islands or even a large group of small islands. And so that's what happened when it says that the earth was divided in the days of Peleg. That's really what happened. The water, the continental shelf sunk. That's probably what happened to Atlantis. And so there was a, a secondary flood, a minor flood, about 100 years after the global flood and it sank the continental shelving. And so that's what we see today. That's why the continents are formed the way they are. So don't buy into the tectonic plate heliocentric garbage. Uh, they don't know what happened. They guess. They're all uniformitarians. They don't realize that sonochemical cavitation greatly accelerated creation. 
So you cannot judge things uniformitarily through time. That's asinine to assume that. Things happen so rapidly and exponentially, even now today. You know, we're, we're approaching the AI singularity. I mean, you cannot judge things like that, especially if something happened ca catastrophically. And so sonochemical capitation actually greatly accelerates the sonochemical process of things and it accelerates, it accelerates the growth and the, the transition from one metal to another or one chemical to another chemical. And so that's what happened. That's why things, that's why we, that's why we live in this so-called young earth. It's because things were accelerated like that. This is the this is the only accurate depiction of how you're going to see what happened during the days of the flood, and it's going to happen again because the sun is moving within the earth and the earth is stationary, and the sun's going to stop. Like I told you before, there's a bunch of ice at the top of the glass sky, 100 kilometers high, and so when that sun stops, all that ice is going to plummet to the ground, and then the sun is going to burn up the earth, as it is recorded in scripture. Giving you plenty of fair warning here, ladies and gentlemen. We even had mega cry meteors falling just yesterday. So, so that's what happened. When the flood happened, the Earth expanded. I don't buy into Adam's understanding of things because he doesn't understand concave. We're inside the Earth, and so there was an expansion, but that pretty much abruptly stopped, pretty much after the flood. And so now is the time to understand and re reveal things to you about the correct shape of the earth. And so, you know, if you don't want to listen to me, you're, you're, you're stupid. I mean, just like in the days of Noah, only eight people survived. Only eight people. So, I mean, I, I'm not willing to any perish, but if you're going to be stupid, if you're not going to believe me when the sun stops and time to take refuge and listen to me and to go underground and and to take refuge and go through the causeway underground to the new kingdom in in Australia, then, you know, you cannot learn. One cannot learn from their mistakes in the past. They're destined to repeat them. So, there you go. This is the correct way in which the earth is shaped and the way in which the flood happened. 